the American West has a very complex history, geologically speaking, and it was formed over hundreds of millions of years. Some sections were formed relatively recently, such as this crater from a meteorite impact, or these volcanic cones. These date from the recent Cenozoic era. In contrast, there are sections of the Grand Canyon which were laid down in the Paleozoic era, the Permian period, the Carboniferous period, um, sections from the Cambrian period, and then deeper sections from the Precambrian. In contrast, the layers of Petrified Forest National Park were laid down during the Triassic period at the beginning of the Mesozoic era. This is an interesting time in Earth's history since it comes after the greatest extinction in the past 500 million years at the end of the Permian. And the Triassic period ends with another of the five worst extinction periods um, as the Atlantic Ocean begins to form again and the supercontinent Pangaea divides. During the Triassic period, this part of the American Southwest would have been near the West Coast, about only 10 degrees uh, latitude north of the equator. It would have been part of a river drainage system, perhaps the size of the Amazon, where uh, an area certainly encompassing the Colorado Plateau, but perhaps even stretching to the Appalachian Mountains, uh, were draining into uh, the Pacific Ocean uh, through this region. A variety of different habitats are preserved here, but in general, the area was wetter during the early Triassic, and because of uplift, became increasingly arid by the late Triassic. When one considers human history, obviously not all people lived at the same time period. The first Egyptian pharaohs, the Mongols, the Roman emperors, those who signed the Declaration of Independence, each of these belonged to their own uh, period in history. They did not all live together. In the same way, when we consider fossil animals, the Triassic has a very unique set of organisms. The Triassic period occurs after a horrible extinction uh, when life is diversifying to replace so many groups which had gone extinct at the end of the Permian. But this fauna predates the modern groups uh, which will evolve later. The fossils of Petrified Forest National Park and surrounding regions include synapsid reptiles like the pig-like reptile Plessarius, which was a therapsid reptile with some but not all of the features of mammals, armored adasaurs, uh, which were not dinosaurs but herbivorous armored reptiles, phytosaurs, which resemble crocodiles but which were uh, not closely related to crocodiles, and one uh, feature which is uh, clear in identifying them is that their nostrils are actually close to their eyes so that they could float with a much smaller region of their head exposed. The first flying vertebrates, the small uh, pterosaurs, the much larger pterosaurs would evolve later. There were also dinosaurs alive during this time period, but they were early dinosaurs, such as Coelophysis. Like the first dinosaurs, it was small, bipedal, and unspecialized. About 200 types of fossil plant are known, although many of these are known only from, say, spores or pollen. About 80 species are known from leaves, cones, seeds, and stems, and a smaller group actually known from trunks of trees. These plants did not include a single flowering plant. Flowering plants would evolve later. Um, the lycopod trees, which were common earlier in Earth's history, were decreasing, um, and uh, ferns and tree ferns were not as common here as they were elsewhere. A number of the trees uh, were relatives of horsetails, uh, which are alive today. There were cycads and ginkgos, um, but the majority of the tree trunks preserved at Petrified Forest National Park, for which the uh, forest gets its name, uh, were uh, primitive gymnosperms, which were not closely related to gymnosperms alive today.